Hello friends, welcome back to the SNW audio channel. In this video, we start a new very exciting and potentially controversial topic, distortion in audio amplifiers. In today's video, we will be covering the following subjects. First, we will discuss distortion basics. What is distortion? What is my stance on distortion? distortion representation in the time and frequency domains, and how is distortion measured. Then, we will discuss the most common distortion mechanisms. First, we will go over the gain transfers plot, we will look into the most common distortion types, and we will understand the significance of odd and even harmonics. Finally, we will look into the distortion sources in the amplifiers. I will discuss systematic distortions and non-systematic distortions. Alright, so let's jump to our first topic, distortion basics. So what is distortion? Distortion is the amount of harmonic overtones added to the amplified input signal due to nonlinearities. When you drive an amplifier with an input signal, a sine wave in this picture for example, but it can literally be any signal, what you get at the output are three things. The ideal output, which is an amplified version of the input signal, this is really what you want. Distortion, which are the harmonics of the input signal caused by the amplifier nonlinearities, and I'll explain later what I mean by harmonics, and noise, which is the amplifier's output regardless of input signal. In this video, we will focus on distortion, more specifically on harmonic distortion. There is another type of distortion called intermodulation distortion, but this will be a subject of another video. So now what is my stance on distortion? As you saw in the previous slide, distortion alters the amplified input signal. This leads to two schools of thought. The first camp says that an amplifier should be as perfect as possible, the output should be a perfect amplified reproduction of the input, and the amplifier should be as low distortion and noise as possible. The second camp says the amplifier should have distortion and should not be perfect. The distortion should be dialed to alter the input signal to make it sound to your liking. For example, one that I just recently heard is that your amp should make the input sound like live music. My allegiance is to camp A build the amplifier in such way that the distortion it adds is inaudible. But, if you would like to color the input signal to have a specific sound of your liking, I believe that this should be done to the line level signal before feeding it to the amplifier. In other words, the amplifier is an amplification device, it is not a sound processing device beyond signal amplification. Let's now get back to technical stuff. Distortion can be studied in the time domain by comparing the input and output signals. Sadly, this is very difficult, since a decent amplifier will have distortion levels of less than 0.1% at the output signal. As a result, we use the Fourier transform, a mathematical transformation that extracts the frequency components of a time domain signal and enables us to analyze it in the frequency domain. Looking at the diagrams here, if we feed an amplifier with a single frequency sine wave of frequency Fi as shown here, the corresponding Fourier transform is a single tone, the vertical bar shown here, at frequency Fi. Now let's look at the output. As we said in the previous slide, the output signal will contain an amplified version of the input signal, and hence a larger tone at frequency Fi, and harmonic distortion. Harmonic distortion is the extra tones present at the output waveform at frequency multiples of Fi. The tone at frequency Fi is referred to as the fundamental, while the higher frequency tones are referred to as harmonics. To quantify how much distortion is present in a signal, we use the total harmonic distortion or THD metric. THD is defined as the ratio of the equivalent RMS amplitude of all harmonic components to the RMS amplitude of the fundamental frequency. If we look at the Fourier transform of the amplifier output as shown here, the height of each vertical bar represents the RMS amplitude of that tone. Therefore, we can write THD as the ratio of the RSS of the harmonic RMS amplitudes V2 through Vn to the RMS amplitude of the fundamental V1 as shown here. High fidelity amplifiers like the Honey Badger amplifier have THD levels below 0.01% across all audio frequencies and rated power levels. For the SNW BFA01, we're aiming for the 0.001% mark. At this point you may be thinking that you need to do heavy math to do a Fourier transform and compute THD. In practice you don't have to, there are tools to help you out, 
both in the lab and in simulation. The diagram here shows how distortion is measured in an amplifier. In this case, a distortion analyzer like the Audio Precision APX555 sweeps the input frequency applied to the amplifier and computes the THD of the output waveform at every fundamental frequency applied. The machine sets the input signal amplitude such that the output is at the desired power level. I acknowledge that the audio precision is a particularly expensive piece of equipment, tens of thousands of dollars, so for DIY, there are much cheaper instruments including PC sound cards. In simulation, you will use an equivalent setup, but rather than using an AP analyzer, you will use the simulator tools. Distortion is typically measured at input frequencies of 1 and 20 kHz at full half and 1 watt power dissipations on 8, 4 and 2 ohm loads. Additionally, I also like to measure THD at 2, 5 and 10 kHz to get a better feel of the distortion signature. Let's now look at some common distortion mechanisms. To understand distortion generating amplifier nonlinearities, let's first understand the game plot of a circuit block. A game plot shows the relationship between the input and the output signals of a block. Therefore, for a given input signal of a given amplitude, you can determine what the output will be. In the diagram shown here, we see the game plot of a perfectly linear block. The block's gain is the slope of the line. The input signal is in the x-axis and the corresponding output is in the y-axis. The line represents the mapping between the input and the output signals. For a perfectly linear block, the gain needs to be a constant, in other words, the line needs to be straight, such that every point on the input signal is amplified by the same amount. As a result, as it is shown here, the output is an amplified version of the input with no harmonics. It is distortion free. The four most common distortions encountered in amplifiers are saturation, rectification, crossover, and nonlinear gain. First, we have saturation. Saturation, as the name implies, clips the signal at high amplitudes. The gain of the block saturates. In its pure form, it produces odd harmonics and it is the dominant source of distortion in the input stage. Think when the amp is slewing and the differential pair is completely tilted to one side. And it is also the dominant source of distortion in the output stage when the amplifier output clips. Second, we have half-wave rectification, a distortion that only allows the processing of single polarity signals. This distortion is typically a consequence of the rectifying nature of transistors. For example, in a class AB output stage, the output devices can only carry single polarity currents. The MPN can only source current and the PMP can only sync current. Hence, the currents these devices carry are halfway rectified. We'll talk more about this when we look at the output stage. Also, to a lesser degree, halfway rectification is also present in non complementary second stages when the constant current source is not sized properly. In its pure form, Half-wave rectification only produces even harmonics. Third, we have crossover distortion, or dead zone. This distortion relates to discontinuities at the zero crossing of an input signal where the gain of the block drops. This distortion is typically found in class AB output stages where the transition from the P to the N device and vice versa has a discontinuity. In its pure form, it produces only odd harmonics. Fourth, we have nonlinear gain. This distortion is a bit generic as it refers to game plots which are not straight. This distortion is almost always present in conjunction with the other three and hence it is present in all stages of the amplifier. As a result, in practice, the first three distortions tend to produce harmonics of orders beyond what is expected in the ideal case. Based on what we saw in the last slide, a new question arises. What order harmonics are produced by a nonlinearity? Let's look at the saturation and the half-wave rectification nonlinearities. Saturation, a perfectly symmetrical nonlinearity, in other words, the top and bottom of the nonlinearity signature or game plot are identical, yields odd harmonics as shown here. Half-wave rectification though, a perfectly asymmetrical distortion, in other words, nothing on the top and bottom of the nonlinearity signature or game plot is repeated, yields even harmonics. It turns out that this result is pervasive such that nonlinearities that are perfectly symmetrical generate odd harmonics 
while nonlinearities that are perfectly asymmetrical generate even harmonics. This result leads to a mnemonic worth remembering. Odd is even and even is odd, where the first odd even descriptor refers to the symmetry of the nonlinearity and the second one to the harmonic content produced by the nonlinearity. In practice, though, most distortions are a combination of symmetric and asymmetric nonlinearities, which lead to both odd and even harmonics. For example, the nonlinearity shown here, which only clips the signal on one side, in other words, is like a half wave saturation nonlinearity, has both symmetric and asymmetric properties. As a result, it creates a full set of harmonics, both even and odd. Let's now look at our final topic for today, the distortions of a voltage feedback two-stage amplifier. As shown in the previous videos, the SNW BFA01, the amplifier we are creating, is a Thomson two-stage amplifier topology. As a result, this topology is our area of focus. In the future, we will look at other amplifier topologies. In all audio amplifiers, there are two categories of distortions, systematic and non-systematic. Systematic distortions are distortions caused by design and component choices, including the topology of choice. On the other hand, non-systematic distortions are distortions caused by layout and wiring choices. Systematic distortions can be categorized by each section of the amplifier as shown in the table below. Systematic distortion contributing sections include the input stage, the second stage, the output stage, the compensation network, the input and feedback networks, the output network, and protection circuit. Let's now look at each section one at a time. For the input stage, we have five distortion sources. First, we have transconductance, which relates to the linearity of the input stages, voltage to current transfer function. Second, we have input bias current, which relates to the interaction of the input stages input bias current with the feedback and input networks. Third, we have output voltage, which relates to the nonlinearities resulting from the modulation of the input stages output voltage. Fourth, we have the input common mode, which relates to the modulation of the input stages transconductance by common mode input voltages. And finally, we have current mirror gain, which relates to the linearity of the current mirror's current gain. For the second stage, we have three distortion sources. First, the second stage is transimpedance, which relates to the loading of the input stage by the second stage. Second, compensation reference modulation, which relates to the nonlinear feed-through current through the compensation network due to modulation of the compensation reference voltage. And third, output voltage, which relates to the changes in the second stage's transimpedance due to modulation of the second stage's output voltage. Finally, for the output stage, we also have three distortion sources. First, the most talked about distortion, crossover distortion, which relates to the gain dead zone at the transfer function zero crossing of the output stage. Second, current gain, which relates to the loading of the second stage by the output stage and its reflection to the input stage. And third, gain non-linearity, which relates to the linearity of the output stage voltage gain outside the dead zone area. I know I'm being very light on the description of these distortions, and this is actually on purpose, because we will be doing deep dives into every single one of them when we describe each section of the amplifier in later videos. Now let's turn our attention to the compensation input and feedback networks, the output network, and the protection circuit. For the compensation input and feedback networks, the main source of distortion is the capacitor distortion due to nonlinear capacitance. This nonlinearity mainly stems from the voltage coefficient of low grade capacitors. In the input network, we address this issue in video 2, part 2, where I emphasize the use of film capacitors over electrolytics. For the output network, magnetic distortion is caused by the nonlinear relationship between current and magnetic flux in the output inductor. Finally, the protection circuit, which is the VI limiting circuit that protects the amplifier from overcurrent and over voltage conditions, may cause premature output overload due to its early activation. Many DIYers actually believe that it is a better trade-off to not have a protection circuit to prevent the premature overload mechanism, but I think this is a bad idea, since a connection mistake, like accidentally shorting the amplifier output to ground, may actually ruin your amplifier. Going back to our initial classification of distortion, 
Non-systematic distortions are distortions caused by layout and wiring choices. These include rail decoupling distortion, negative feedback takeoff point distortion, and induction distortion. Rail decoupling distortion relates to the injection of large half-rectified currents into the signal ground by the rail decoupling capacitors. These capacitors provide instant power to the supply rails during high-frequency input signal peaks which result in large currents flowing through these capacitors. If these currents are not properly routed to the power supply ground and make their way to the input ground, they will cause distortion. Negative feedback takeoff point distortion relates to sensing the output node at the wrong location for global feedback purposes. As a consequence, distortion generating mechanisms in the output stage do not get corrected by global feedback. Finally, inductive distortion relates to inductive crosstalk from large current traces and wires into the amplifier signal path, especially the input stage and feedback network. As you may have already noticed, the systematic and non-systematic distortion tables have an addressed column. This is because these tables will serve us as a reference of the existing distortions and as a tracker as we address them. Our next video will be a hands-on session using LTSpice where we look at how to measure distortion in simulation. In this video, we will understand the FFT mechanics, the LTSpice setup and associated commands, and as a demonstration, we will be measuring the distortion in the Honey Badger amplifier. If you have any questions regarding the content of this video, feel free to write questions and comments in the comment section below. If you like the content of this video and want to get notified when the next video is available, Please show your support to this channel by subscribing and hitting the thumbs up button. Thanks for watching, until next time, goodbye.